Hello, Maureen. <laughs> Hello, Noel. I tell you, you're looking as well as the first pint on day two of a stag. When are you going to start that intro music? What, do you still not like No, like look. Make peace with Jimmy Buckley. <laughs> Get him in to do the job. This gripe you have with him is going on too long. Look, <laughs> obviously he has, you know, obtained your woman or something. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what he does. He's a big star. You think you're the first guy left sitting in the hallway like Joseph? <laughs> the quietest man in Nazareth? You know? Get you two. What are they doing lately? You, you, two, you want you two to do your intro song? What? Did you even ring them? I don't have a number for them. Oh, one. I saw. I don't have, have you? a number. Oh, I'll, I'll get one. Okay. Where the streets have no name. Yeah. Cavern. Okay. Where they robbed all the road signs for scrap. <laughs> they have a lovely song about TK Maxx. What's that? You know, shopping in TK Maxx. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. <laughs> Bono and Ian there half the day. And they have a song about the South Junior A final of 89. Well, Sunday, bloody Sunday. <laughs> well, Kildidal had a priest hurling centre back. He killed four men in the first half. <laughs> Said their funeral the week after. Yes. You know, but there was no blood sub in those days. What about the script? I don't. I don't have contact details for, for it. sure. Oh. They've got tunes now. You know, they have The Man Who Can't Be Moved <laughs> about the Keiko Brian. Of course. <laughs> Jay's mind, he was drunk as an ass one day, one night, and he tried to walk home. Didn't he fall asleep above on the road? Blocked the roundabout. <laughs> 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 the council had to implement a stop-go system. <laughs> Couldn't shift him. Jerry Donald came on the digger. The high Mac calved. <laughs> Couldn't shit there Four days the road was closed The man who can't be moved Till he woke up He'd broke out Gave nine weeks on the beer Jeez. No sleep Wow That's a fact That's what I'm going Ducky Dillon brought him home For a finish on a flatbed truck <laughs> Tipped him out at the gate But sure fact Paddy Fong was supposed to collect him from the pub But sure He wasn't around He wasn't around Of course You know what I mean So there was an article about it um, In the local paper Right Read the Golden Veil vale Weekly. <laughs> good, good. All the news from Banjo to Burncourt. You know it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the headline read, Local man blocks roundabout with fat hole. Right? <laughs> a man, I have it here. A man believed to be aged between 50 and 80 <laughs> with, with the body composition of a second-hand bus could not be moved. <laughs> Police fired off several shots close to his head in an attempt to wake the giant... And Harrity's also tried smelling salts <laughs> and setting his jumper on fire. <laughs> but you know, Vale, on the third day, it appeared the monster was about to roll over, but it was just a fart. <laughs> <laughs> Three members of the fire brigade were injured in the blast. <laughs> their condition is not thought to be life threatening, but they're fairly shook. <laughs> One man described it as like being rode by the devil. But it's a great local paper. Um, they had a crossword last week where every word was stoat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. Oh, brilliant. You should get that. <clears throat> um, bit of news. Yeah. <laughs> Noel's news. Noel's news. And there's a couple in New Zealand who have the biggest spud in history. Did you see this? No. You hear about this, no? No. Yeah. Okay. Colin and Donna Brown dug up a potato weighing... 7.9 kg. Jeez. And the beast of a spud was dug up last August, and they've been trying to get it made official by the Guinness Book of Records um, ever since. Yeah. And they've taken a sample of the spud, and it has to be sent to Scotland, of all places, for DNA testing. Wow. To make sure Colin is the fatter. No, just to make <laughs> sure that it wasn't genetically modified. Okay. Darrington. But uh, they're, they're sick of it. They had big farms to fill in the whole lot, trying to get into the Guinness Book of Records. And I said, you don't have to tell me about that records crowd. We tried to get into the Guinness Book of Records. They'll right. tell you this. No, never. For your time. Now, the club needed the money. <laughs> You'd be yeah, so it's, it's an ominous start, isn't it? We were, would you believe, we were going through a tight patch <laughs> at the time. Right. Just a kind of a, a skinny patch <laughs> In the club's money finance. Wise, money wise. Money wise, yeah. yeah. In the finances. And we needed a fundraiser. So we said we would break the world record for the longest game of hurling 
ever played. Okay, right, that's fair enough. Yeah, so we said it was only kind of an exhibition match between us and the Glen. Okay. They were to get half the money, but I was counting, so, you know, they, I mean, well, they didn't go home empty handed. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and the exhibition match, the mayor was there, the bishop, the TDs, the newspaper men, all there to witness the 24 hour game of hurling. Wow. We were going to play. Now, it was going well. After about 12 hours, we stopped for half time. I was starved. Yeah. I was starved. And that's price. Christ, I was starved, right? I went down to Shamrock Lounge. I had five dinners. Now, Eddie had stayed up 36 hours straight cooking sausages, <laughs> did more salt than the Dead Sea, <laughs> and several members of the national media were suffering from gaspization, <laughs> where you'd be pure gasping and it could only be cured by a pint. <laughs> Eddie had been rushed to hospital on the 37th hour. But oh, overexposure to sausages. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> Wait till I tell you. I had the soup. I had the bacon and cabbage. Oh, lovely. I had the chicken Maryland. <laughs> I had the roast beef. I had the roast pork. And I had the turkey and ham. I had the apple tart, the apple crumble, Bailey's cheesecake and jelly and ice cream. A mug of tea and two quick pints. <laughs> now, I said I wouldn't have the deep fried card in case of repeating me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you couldn't take the chance. You couldn't take the chance. Back down to the field For the second half of the match <laughs> Well didn't I take on too much spuds The jacket potatoes Had an allergic reaction With me legs <laughs> So they know I don't eat chips in the shamrock So they came round Extra scoop of mash and I will Margaret Me two legs Locked up <laughs> Locked up solid right <laughs> Doctor on call Examined me And he said I should be dead <laughs> I said I'd play in goal. <laughs> <laughs> now, I hate playing in goal. Yeah. Fellas driving the ball at you, trying to take your eye out. So we're into the second half, after about an hour, Sloopy Halloran from the Glen. <laughs> Sloopy gets in one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> one-on-one -on -one with me, right? And he's bearing down. He's under 21. He's under penalty spot. He's under 13. And I said to him, I said, Sloopy, put that ball over the bar. I'll fucking murder you. <laughs> To be the end of your sloping days. I said, I'll bury you in the women's toilets and no one will find you because no one goes in there. <laughs> it's very bad. Yeah, it's, We need to do something about it. No, it's, yeah. it's actually still bad 20 years later, but it needs a bit of jiffy. <laughs> <laughs> it needs, uh, I put you down for that. Uh, I'll me? volunteer you for a job. You'll be oh, good. Oh, God. So we hurled through the night anyway. There was no lights in those days. Of course, Shaky Wallace was doing the referee at the time. And you know Shaky, like by the time Mike hit, he was fairly drunk. Yeah. He was fairly, he'd actually missed the start of the second half on account of the sausages. And when once he had one drink, well, they say he's like a tub of Pringles. Once you pop, there you go. <laughs> so he was pished. There you go. Right. He was, Sh Shaky was pished, right? So he took the riff in the game from the stand. <laughs> it's crazy. Now, in the darkness... Five and a half hours, I heard no whistle. <laughs> Which was handy, because it was so dark we were hurling by the sound of it. <laughs> Sticky Moore thought he'd scored a hat-trick, and the next morning he found three dead swallows by his ankles. <laughs> well, the ref blew the whistle around lunchtime, and we had won. Okay. The people I had pulled on overnight were taken away. <laughs> then, the fuckers, we were disqualified. Why? Well, the man from the book said the four-hour fight we had in the first half <laughs> didn't count as hurling. I said, you don't know the Glen Boys. <laughs> Should I, what good is a match without a fight? We never made the book. Oh, no. But the club raised the money. Oh, good. And the dressing rooms got roofed. Good, good. So this couple in New Zealand have a 7.9 kg spud. And they're not even going to eat it. Oh, no. What a, what a waste. <laughs> so that's the news. Thanks a million, though. Over and out. Thanks. Thanks very much. Good luck.